Right. We've just finished putting together our investments uh, portfolio uh, for, well, post the election, I would just say. And builders of the election, there is also a few things that we need to pay attention to. We're going to give you a lot of insights today uh, regarding which states we should really pay attention to, whether uh, we're going to have policy changes and how aggressive those are going to be. And also we're going to look at the most recent polls in order to get a hint of what is really happening in the markets currently and why. So I'm going to pass you over to David right now and we'll speak again in a minute. Thank you for that, Stavros. So yes, it is indeed true that Biden holds a 52% majority over Trump. Now we want our traders to understand what are the market effects if Trump gets a re-election or if there's a new president next month. And in doing so, looking at the national polls and the popular vote, we've seen that in previous elections, such as 2016 and 2000 with Al Gore and Hillary Clinton, they were both leading the popular vote, but unfortunately came out on the losing side. So let's take a more in-depth look at the polls at the moment to see, in fact, what states are most important to win. Okay, so if we take a quick look at the latest poll tracker, we see that Joe Biden has commanding lead over Donald Trump. Now, interestingly enough, even if Donald Trump wins his solid and leading states, he will still not have enough electoral college votes to win the presidency next week. And if Joe Biden, most interestingly, can win at any of these battlegrounds of Texas, Florida, or Ohio, it will be very difficult for Donald Trump to reclaim his presidency. Donald Trump will then have to go into Democratic states such as Michigan and Pennsylvania in order to stand a chance. And interestingly enough, every candidate that's gone on to win Ohio since 1960 has gone on to win the presidency. So let's take a look at what we've been working on. Over to you, Stavros. With Biden winning the election, we're going to have to shift our focus to policy changes, right? Because uh, those policy changes are what are going to uh, give us hints at how big the market moves are going to be. If we get a clean slate win for Biden, then we're most likely going to see aggressive moves because we're going to see aggressive policy changes. Now, one particular policy I wanted to uh, pay attention to uh, today is related to energy. Any companies uh, related to green energy, renewable energy, infrastructure projects, as well as wind turbines, are going to be supported. Now, particularly, I've been looking at uh, the Qualcomm uh, stock, uh, David. So this is one of my picks uh, post-election, if, of course, we get a Biden win. What have you been looking at? Thank you very much for that, Stavros. So if we look at the policy changes that were spoken about by the two candidates, we looked at healthcare, energy and trade war. What I want to just touch upon is the trade war specifically, because if there is a Biden presidency, then we could see these Chinese tariffs that have been in place for the last four years be abolished, which would make room for the technology sector to increase. And then on the back of that, the Nasdaq to increase as well. On the other hand, though, if there is a Trump presidency and he is in the White House the next four years, then we are we looking at uh, a stock like Oracle because of the acquisition for TikTok that he wants to push through. So let's take a look at the charts and get a better perspective of what we're looking at. Thanks, David. So I'll be starting with Qualcomm first, my top pick. I'm looking at this as wave two down here uh, after completing a running flat. So this is an upside move for primary wave three. And I'm looking uh, for a rejection at 145 for wave three because this is the 161 extension of waves one and two if we take into consideration this as uh, as a running flat now that would uh, suggest a correction after the uh, the 145 is taken and a continuation to the upside uh, now in case of course before the election we see this price action over here developing some sort of different pattern because i'm expecting the rule of alternation to be respected and i'm expecting a sideways move here then this whole scenario is likely to change now david if you don't mind i want to jump on your own pick i will look at oracle and that is of course if we get a trump win right he will really push for this deal to go through i've been uh, looking at oracle for a while because we are actually in cycle wave three as well over here which means it's going to be a huge move to the upside right now we've had a rejection at wave one and a correction down for another rejection at the lower channel indicating that we're moving with an upside bias and with this correction being taken out now i'm expecting wave three to come through now wave three i'm going to look at the hundred uh, Fibonacci extension of wave one and two. This is the 79.15 and I will be looking that uh, becoming wave three and then we're going to get four and then we're going to get five. Now last but not least I want to have also a quick look on Nasdaq because we talked about the potential of uh, a Biden win 
actually causing some sort of upside move. Um, but I wanted to make a note here. Uh, David very well suggested that this is going to be a long-term opportunity on the upside because technology stocks are going to be supported. But um, mind you that first, initially, we're most likely to see prices correcting. This is because we are expecting a heavy tax burden to weigh on the technology stocks, not only technology stocks actually, because uh, Biden is uh, going to increase taxes for corporations, right? Now, this will go to hang on the stimulus as well, the timing of the stimulus and the size of the stimulus. So I would be either looking for a correction down and then a continuation up, or I would be looking for another move to the upside, create a fresh low and then start moving lower. So David, back to you. So not only are we looking at what markets are going to be affected by the US presidency, but we're also looking at what markets are not going to be affected and possibly completely immune to the results next week. So I'll be looking at the other side of the pond, possibly the European sector stocks, most notice, noticeably Santander, because not only are they cut off from the American banking system, but they don't charge interest rates. And it also gives them a competitive advantage with their main rivals. David, this is a very nice pick indeed. What I'll be doing in order to hedge my portfolio uh, is I'm going also to look for a particular stock. I've actually just looked um, around for it. Uh, is Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer indeed trades in the stock uh, exchange in the US and it's going to be affected in the short term. But I think uh, it's going to be affected mainly and massively from the coronavirus va vaccination that Pfizer is really working on. Now, if we get it uh, dependent on their estimates, this is going to be very good for the stock. Now, if we get it at all, again, it's going to be very good for the stock. But apart from Pfizer, I'll be also looking in terms of uh, if they fail, I'll be looking at the alternative company that is going to come up with a vaccination first. So thank you very much all for watching. I hope it's, it's helpful for your uh, decision making when it comes to the US election and I will see you on the trading floor.